Hi, I'm going to be giving you a peek at JShell, which is the new interactive shell for the Java language in JDK 9. I'm Robert Field. I'm the architect and lead of JShell. So have you ever wondered about some aspect about it, of how Java works? A library, a Java construct, a bit of semantics? Maybe you've written a little program to find out. Let's say you don't know how unsigned shift works with negative numbers thing in red there, but you'd need to write a program. So you create a, a file, maybe in your IDE, maybe from the shell, and you have to create a class and a method, public static void main and arguments and a print line, and then you can actually look at what you're interested in. Well, once you've done that, you need to compile it and then run it, then you get an answer, and that you probably want to revise. So let me show you how it's done in JShell. In JShell, we can just type in what we're interested in, and we immediately see the results. It's one. And it's also put in a scratch variable called $1, so we can access it later if that's interesting to us. But one doesn't tell me much. What if it was minus three? Okay, that's seven. It looks like maybe bits. Um, let's find out by looking at a variety of values. So we want i to be, let's say, go up to minus 40. And let's print out both the shift amount, um, which is i, and the result. So the shift amount is i. The result is minus 1 shifted by i. And we see that all those, but those are bits. So probably not a very useful way to see how that works works, let's represent them as bits. So I know that integer has a function a method that converts to a bit string, but I don't know what it is. So I can type tab here, and it will show me what methods there are on the integer class. And sure enough, there's a two binary string. I put in 2b and complete it, and there we go. Well, if you make a mistake, you immediately see it in JShell. In this case, it's telling us that it's now a string, and we can't use an integer conversion for that. So I have to go back and change that to a string. And let's give a width to the other. Now let's look. OK, I, did, I only put in 20 spaces, and it's a 32-bit integer. Let's really look at it at the right width. Um, so we can immediately play and, and get exactly the information we want. OK, now we're going back to the slides. What is JFChell good for? It's for exploring uh, APIs that are unfamiliar to you or language features. We just saw a tiny example of that. You get to experiment and in instantly see results. When you're new to Java or new to programming, it, every API and language feature is new to you, so it's a great way to learn. You can start with expressions and statements rather than having to understand the whole structure of a class and methods. You also get immediate feedback, which helps with learning. And the third kind of use of JShell is you're prototyping something complex that you don't know exactly how it works. You can do that bit at a time and build it up within JShell. But what is JShell? So it's a tool for dynamically interacting with the Java language. It's a read evaluate print loop or REPL. And finally, there's one for the Java language. You just type in a snippet of code and you see the results. So JShell is deeply integrated with the JDK tool set. Um, what that means is it stays current and it's compatible with the language and semantics of Java. So what we're looking at is going to be the tool because that's easy to show. But there's also an API on which J the JShell tool is built and which you can build another REPL of your choosing or use it with another tools that you want to be able to evaluate Java, Java code. How do you use the JShell tool? As we saw, you just type in JShell at the command line, assuming JDK 9 is installed. JShell tool uses two kinds of input. One snippets, so we've seen those, little pieces of declarations or execution. Uh, the other thing is JShell commands, and they give you more information about what's going on or allow you to control how JShell works. 
Commands are distinguished from snippets by using slash in front of them. And your input, whether it's snippets or commands, can be tab completed and has a history and, and it can be edited. The line editing, in fact, uh, uses Emacs, standard Emacs bindings. What are snippets? They're declarations, which include variable declarations, method declarations, class declaration in interfaces, imports, or expressions from the very simple to uh, convoluted uh, stream lambda expressions. They're all the statements, while, if, switch, so forth. In fact, the only things that aren't allowed are things that don't make any sense in the context of JShell. You're not programming in the large, so there's no packages. You can't have statements without their enclosing context, just like you can't in programming in Java the normal way. Give you a little idea of the commands. So there's commands to get information. You can list the snippets you've entered. You can look at your variables, etc. You, of course, can exit JShell. And you can set up an environment you want to work in. So you set your class path, module path. You can look at and access the history. And you can use any editor you want from within JShell. You can also save your work. And JShell is highly configurable. So there's a sophisticated set command that allows you to set up JShell to work exactly how you want. There's also online help for all of all of this. Okay, here's a quick look at the architecture of JShell. I don't need to worry about this too much, but I mentioned that it is built on top of the JDK. And sure enough, it uses the standard Java C compiler. And for execution, it uses the standard virtual machine. Between the JShell tool and the JShell core implementation, you see something called the JShell API. That allows you to build other tools using this functionality. So let's play with that. Here's JShell. I know that happens to be the core class of JShell, but not much else about it. So we'll need to import that. There's a, there's a cool trick in JShell. You just say uh, shift tab I, and it offers to import that class. So we'll type one and it's now imported. But I don't know what to do with this JShell class I've got. Let's hit tab and see what the completions are. Well, creating an instance of JShell is what I want. So that sounds like the place to go. Now I want to hold on to that as well. So let's hold on to our instance of uh, JShell by creating a variable by typing shift tab V, then I can, all I have to do is type in the name because it's already provided the type. So I have the instance of JShell, but I'm not quite sure what to do with it. We're gonna want to evaluate snippets. Um, let's see, well, look, there's an eval method. I type EV and it'll fill in the eval, but I don't know what the parameters are. If I type tab again, it will actually show me what the parameters are. It looks like it's a string input, but if I want more information about what that is, I can type tab again, it will give me the documentation for eval. Okay, let's say we want to just create a variable. That's our test snippet for our new REPL, and we'll want to put that somewhere too. So again, let's type shift tab V, and that's our result. And our result is a list of snippet events. And there's only one thing in that list. So um, let's get the one snippet event in the list, um, which we can do with get zero, kind of cheating. And we want to hold on to that event too. And it's saying not only can we create a variable, it, we can also import that type and create the variable, which sounds more elegant. So let's do that. Let's call that variable event. Now, what can I do on event? Looks like I have a lot of options, everything from the snippet that caused the event to the status and so forth, and the, an exception. Uh, but let's see what our status is. Status is valid. Well, that's good. It's a valid snippet. But what we're really interested in is the value. 
the value is three. So that sounds good too. Well, now we're ready. We can write a little method since we can write methods, classes, any of those things in J shell. Um, and notice all along I'm using tab to complete things. It makes this quick because I'm I type slowly. Now all we want to do here is print out the value. We'll get a little so the value the value is a string and it's in, we just saw is in the value method. And that's the end of our method. And so we've declared a method in JShell. Let's test it out. So we can test immediately. That's one of the advantages of what you can do in JShell. So we'll display the event we just created. Sure enough, it gives us a value. Now we can write the first step in processing. So the input we're going to process is a string, which is our snippet. And we'll use that display method we just created. But what we're going to be displaying is the evaluation, what we saw before, of whatever the input was. And again, we're going to cheat and get the first result. And now let's see what we've got. Can we process an input? Let's say, can we process two plus two as an expression? Sure enough, it works. So where do you get all this? JShell is part of JDK9, which you can download at this link. And please participate in our mailing list and follow us on Twitter. Thank you.